I sit here and talk about energy conservation and solar if I don't do it myself? That's why I did it. So that I can have this conversation with you, not in the abstract, but in reality. Okay, can I get back to reality? Okay. First of all, Con Edison sold all their plants. This is on my time. They only own two plants. Also, their stock is up very well. So whether they did it to benefit the money in one way, sir, was just to turn around and figure now we can take care of our stock and our stockholders. That's that was a bad move. Also, look at Brazil. They run their cars on three different operations. Where are we? They got fossil, they got gas, right? And I switch you with the other person that you You buy a car. And then all. And then all. And all. Okay, so why can't we, and also, if you haven't staying alert, which I'm sure you are, all these big farms of gas that have been found in uh, off the north coast in, in Europe, down south, over in Brazil, over someplace else. So there is enough gas, he said, to go for another 25 years. But yet, if we're going to be running on the same coal, or we're doing that, then somebody is not doing their homework, or the people who are the engineers are not fulfilling their alignment. Start to open up your eyes, please, because it's hurting us in our mouth. And thank you. Lady, you want to come back? Let's take on this one if you come back in the evening. The uh, two things that this gentleman touched on uh, was net metering. If you may want to respond on net metering. And another question I believe is probably a lot of people to see. They're worried about the water supply and kind about of, uh, hydro lacking. What, what do you call that? Like if they're going over the gas? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. That would be probably national. Do you have a response to that? I think Marcellus Marcellus Paul. Uh, Net metering means that, and this is what happens when you put solar panels in. What happens is, is that Con Edison puts in a digital meter that can actually go backwards. So that, I took a look at my bill here for, I have it here for the last year. You can actually see that my numbers are going in reverse. And what happens every day, my wife and I are out working today, we had a nice day. Our two hats don't use much electricity, so during the day the meter is going in reverse because we're not using hardly anything, whatever the, whatever's on from the microwave. Or whatever. At night we're home, and so we're using electricity. The meter runs in the opposite direction. We're now using electricity. We're using content electricity, but during the day we're using sun, but we're not using it. We're feeding it into the Con Edison system. And by feeding it into the system, our meter goes in reverse. We're getting a credit. We've been home at night. The meter goes in the opposite direction. If one were to take a 24-hour period of time, generally speaking, what happens in our household is that if you took a look in 24 hours, we end up sending it into the Con Edison grid more electricity than we take back when we use it at home. And so that's called net metering. It's done automatically. There's no, there's no switching or anything else. The meter keeps track of the ebb and flow. Electricity is like water, time. There's an ebb and a flow to it. And so that's what net metering means, that you can, if you have, if you're generating enough solar power, that your meter can net to go in an opposite direction to generate credits for you on your bill. That's why my bill, I don't have no power. I ended up with a credit, and that $16.40 reflects my system delivery charge, the basic charge of being hooked up to the car that is the system. Everybody understand that meter? I do fly or a shell. Okay. Can, can anybody respond on that? That's what the people are saying. Can you, uh, National Grid, where they're going into the ground? On the, uh, I'm sorry. Where they're going into the drilling, into the ground around the ground. 
water supply and people are nervous because they're trying to get the gas out of the ground. Mashallah, are you aware of that? All right, we'll bring that up in a couple of minutes. I'm actually not too uh, familiar with that specific uh, situation. I'm from the Consumer Advocacy Department at National Grid. Um, but in the Grid Department, we deal mostly with customers and billing issues, not so much with technical. Uh, all right. I can answer you too. Okay. All right. Uh, the there was a there's a, a strata of rock formation in the eastern part of the United States that runs from roughly West Virginia, the southern part of West Virginia, and Virginia, northeast through Pennsylvania into the southern tier of New York, just south of the Finger Lakes, and over as far as the Ashoka Reservoir, upstate in here, just west of Kingston. It's called the Marcellus Fault. And through technology, um, Chesapeake Energy Company, I guess it's the largest company, um, they discovered that by using a, it's called fractured uh, process, they shoot water, high pressure water, into this sham and they're able to knock out pockets of gas. I don't know how they capture it, but it gets done, and you now have a new gas supply. The problem with the process is that there's a byproduct. The byproduct, you've got this, this brackish water that now you're thousands and thousands of gallons. What do you do with that? And the great fear was that Take a look at the New York City watershed here. It's almost like ground zero of where you can want to take out this potential gas. Now, the people who live upstate, and if you know anything about the economy of upstate, it's really bad upstate. It's really bad. And so the people who live upstate, governments upstate, they want to see this happen because they see dollar signs. They see revenue coming in to their local municipalities. They see locals getting jobs as a result of this. They see it as an economic boom. The people of New York City see it as a threat to our water supply. And so what the uh, Patterson administration did they actually, the correct me, said it the wrong one, the administration said that we're not going to prohibit this, but we're going to put you under a special designation that you have to go through a couple more hoops to show us how you're going to make this safe. And so they didn't totally uh, prohibit this from occurring, but they put a sufficient block to this so that it's not going to happen tomorrow. And they left open some wiggle room that the other part of the state, the western part where you have this Marcellus Hall, the western part that uh, is far away from our water supply, the Catskill and the Ashoka water supply, there's a greater possibility that it can happen there, but not necessarily uh, anywhere near our water supply. So for the time being, it looks like we're safe, but what has to re always remain here? It is working. It's working in Pennsylvania. But in Pennsylvania, they did in fact um, damage some of the water supply in the areas. It was an accident. Uh, they corrected it. Uh, but I do believe what you said is correct. It's something that we will see happening in the future. Uh, but everybody wants to be um, on notice that they can't our watershed or water supply and damage our water supply. I'll be right over there. I got one question and I'm coming right over to you. As a matter of fact, why don't you come up if you can? I'll tell them I'm coming right over Hi. My name is uh, Tom Kavanaugh. I grew up in Garrison Beach 35 years ago. I moved to the Marine Park when I got there. Oh. In the last eight years, during the Bloomberg administration, my property taxes have increased in America. My water taxes are increased 100%. My electricity charges 